Hello, and welcome to Art Block, the show where we talk about art and how it's made. I'm your host, Spirit, and today we'll be doing something different. Today we'll be taking a look at some artists' work, discussing their art styles, as well as some of the aspects of their styles that are either really well executed or really unique. The main point of this video is to provide some examples of different techniques and styles that are good for anyone looking to improve or make changes to their art style. These also aren't in any particular order either, but I feel like each of these artists all have styles that everyone could learn a thing or two from. And if for some reason you aren't following these guys already, I've left a link to a journal which features all of their pages, so make sure to give them a watch if you haven't already. So without further ado, let's get into it. So our first artist is Imalu. One thing I like about Imalu's style is how her characters are very shapely and beautiful to look at. In particular, I like how she uses texture and detail, especially in the eyes. While Imalu's art is detailed and nicely shaded, I wouldn't exactly call it realistic. There are some aspects, such as individual hairs and soft shading, that give the characters a little extra dimension. Though your conscious brain knows that it's an illustration, your eyes are going to see a dimensional character. Of course, what helps is that the art is very crisp and clean, though it still has the feeling of tangibility that isn't as easily achieved in digital art nowadays. While Imalu's art is very nice and shapely, another thing I need to point out is how dynamic her artwork is. Depth and sense of motion are both difficult things to learn, especially when working with characters in complex backgrounds. Now, normally when you're working with characters, you'll usually want to have the character height sheets or at least a numerical value that gives you the idea of how tall your character will be in general. But you'll also have to keep in mind the size of their surroundings in comparison. Despite the dynamic posing, the characters never really appear off-model, which is a term for when characters might lose some of their proportion for the sake of a comedic or artistic choice. In Imalu's case, the characters not only manage to stay on model, but they also have consistent details when it comes to the character. I think my favorite is probably the dueling dragons piece. The camera angle and overall color sense conveys the emotion very well in the piece. Now, we've talked about bringing shape and liveliness, but what about true painterly texture? Well, let's take a look at our next artist, Plain Oasis. Plain Oasis particularly caught my eye because of his rougher painting technique, which to me is somewhat reminiscent of oil pastels and rougher acrylic paintings. A lot of digital art I've seen is usually very clean and a little too crisp at times, which, while that's fine, I am personally a fan of the rougher look of artwork like this. It feels gritty and tangible. From what I can tell, Plain Oasis mostly uses a custom brush set in order to achieve the look, but what makes the style work the best is how everything is done manually. If you look really closely, you can see individual brush strokes which define the shape and highlights in the picture. Lastly, I need to mention the use of color. A lot of digital artists will make their form shadows by taking a darker shade of purple or blue and simply reducing the opacity over the picture, then erasing. However, that doesn't really work when you're doing everything manually. Something that you need to learn when you're making art is that shadows have depth, and when you're doing your pieces manually or traditionally, you'll need to know how to blend your shadows and highlights manually. Plain Oasis' work, at least from what I can tell, has most of the shadows and highlights painted by hand, so it really adds to the sort of genuine feeling of the artwork. Definitely an artist you'll want to check out if you're in the market for some more painterly work. And next up we have Lule MT. Let's talk about detail for a second. So far we've covered a couple of styles that feature more painterly styles, but None of them really featured this level of detail when it came to the way they portrayed their characters and backgrounds. The important thing to know about detail is how to incorporate just the right amount of detail into your piece. This has to do with composition, something that's vital when it comes to making art. When working with high amounts of detail in your composition, there's two things to keep in mind. What is the focus of your picture, and what level of detail are you planning on incorporating? This kind of planning can actually be seen in the traditionally animated Disney films. Since the characters have a more defined style compared to the background, they stand out instead of fading into their surrounding area. Lule MT's work does the same thing, but instead of making the characters simple, her characters are incredibly detailed. This unicorn here has individual strands of hair that flow away from the mane, and even here on the coat you can see tufts of fur and the general flow of the hair. I also need to point out the eyes. Hyper-detailed and realistic eyes can be... really difficult to work with. Too much detail, and the eyes end up standing out compared to the rest of the character. Not enough detail, and the eyes can look flat. I think what I like most about Lule's style of eyes is this little shine here. Since the iris and the pupil are so big compared to the rest of the eye, the little detailed shine of the flower in the unicorn's eye ends up standing out just enough while also keeping a level of realism in the piece. The last thing I should mention is how Lule incorporates real photos into her piece. 
I actually couldn't tell before because they blend so well into the piece, but taking a closer look at them, the flowers and some of the background plants are actually photographs incorporated into the final version. What makes this work is that Lule takes the photograph and then adds manual shadows to it, along with some color correction and some other things I probably didn't catch. Since the plants in the background are blurred, the focus on the pony isn't pulled away. However, it does provide some nice color instead of just solid green everywhere. Hmm, might have to commission her for some Art of Kari. Our next artist on this list is Keyframe, or Cosmic Chrissy. Alright, I couldn't make this video without at least talking about Key's work. Keyframe's style has really grown on me over the years. While her designs are relatively simple compared to some of the other artists on this list, what makes the artwork is the texture and lighting technique. If you look at the hair, you can see individual strands. Guessing by the consistency, it's probably a brush at reduced opacity, though if it's all done manually, then I'm very impressed. Another feature of Key's work is the little features she adds into her art, things like these little bubbles, lens flares, and little bits of extra texture. While her shading looks to be some variation of airbrushing, there's still a lot of precision to the lighting and shadows. Her shadows also appear multi-layered. From what I can tell, Key has her flat coloring, then she adds a highlight, a mid-tone shadow, and then a darker shadow. Lastly, I need to talk about her line work. There's a term in art called line weight. When you're working with line art, generally you need to be careful when you're working with thick black lines. But the way that Key airbrushes over the lines ends up not only helping with the intensity, but makes the piece look less like a flat piece of art and more like a 3D structure. Now, we've talked mostly about painterly or textured works, so why not make a small switch? Coming up, we have Blitzy Arts. Do you like anime? I like anime. So yeah, I figured I should at least have one anime-esque artist on here, and what better example to choose from than Blitzy? Admittedly, while there's a lot of different ways to draw the anime style, there are a few styles on execution that you can see in Blitzy's artwork here. The main thing to note with the anime style is the way that shading is executed. Most anime artwork will usually feature single-toned or double-toned cell shading, though there are exceptions like the recent Devilman rendition. Go about doing cell shading is to have a solid color such as a dark red or a dark blue as your shadow, and then reduce the opacity of the layer. The same works for highlights, though make sure that you keep the highlights to the same color as your light source. What I feel many people find appealing about the anime-esque art is that it feels very clean and easy on the eyes, and even though there's a lot of different ways to go about the execution, you can generally recognize when something is anime-esque. Personally, I don't have much to say on Blitzy's actual illustration style, though there are certain parts such as the eyes and the way that she draws fur that are very appealing. I think one thing in Blitzy's style that I don't see in a lot of animal characters is how she accentuates the lower lip. Generally, whenever I see art of animals, they'll usually have the lower lip hidden beneath the upper lip. While hiding the lower lip is more realistic to actual animals, Blitzy's style overall makes her characters seem a bit more human, something that works really well especially since she draws in the anthropomorphic style. Let's keep it toony, though, with a different take. Next up, we have Skeleon. I recently rediscovered Skeleon, and man does her work impress me. The main standout about Skeleon's work is the overall expressiveness and attitude. The benefit to using a simplified style when it comes to drawing your characters is that there's a lot more opportunity for pushed expression. Something that isn't seen as often in the more detailed or realistic stuff. Skeleon's art is also the first we've seen to use colored lines. I already mentioned line weight, but one way to relieve some of the intensity of your line work is to have either a darker or lighter color of the fill color in your line work with a clipping mask. See my Photoshop tutorial for more on that. Lastly, the line work and general shape of the characters is overall appealing. You can see similar uses of defining shapes in other artists' work, such as Vizipop or Underpapal. Despite the style being simpler, don't let it fool you. There's still some active precision work going on here. Sticking with the simpler side, let's talk about Anime Christie's work. Anime Christie, or Sapphire as some of you have come to know her, has an art style that I have trouble describing. Not because it's bad, but because it stands out. Unlike Keyframe's work, which has relatively consistent line width, Sapphire's work has many varying levels of width and detail. What makes this style work is that it has a very ink and brush feel to it, which gives some weight to the stroke. Sapphire also features hair-like streaks in her artwork, which break up the monotony of what would normally be a very flat shape. These texture lines not only provide detail, but it also provides a bit more depth to the character. Sapphire's style of shading and texture is also something I don't see as often. In cases like this dragon, the scales of the dragon's back appear to be some sort of texture brush with some reduced opacity to make the effect more subtle. Shading with textures in an airbrush style is something I don't often see in artwork, primarily because it can get quite invasive if you don't do it right. 
While I won't consider Sapphire's shading as accurate as, say, I'm a Loser or Lula MT's work, I can't exactly say that it's an incorrect way to go about it. Airbrushing in general tends to be a little less accurate compared to manual painting, but Sapphire uses this to her advantage. While I wouldn't call it watercolor-like, Sapphire's style of shading and color are very dreamlike and pretty on the eyes. Next up, we have an artist who seems straight out of Disney, Kitschiki. Knowing me, the fact that there's a Disney-esque styled artist on this list shouldn't be surprising. Kitschiki actually has two styles that I really wanted to feature, but for now I want to talk about how she works her characters into her backgrounds. I've already mentioned composition and detail with Lule MT's work, so I figure we should at least talk about the opposite side of the spectrum. While Kitschiki's backgrounds aren't quite as detailed compared to some of our previous examples, they're still detailed just enough to be a contrast to the characters. Since the characters are drawn in a different style compared to the background, your eye knows to go to the characters, even if they aren't the biggest part of the picture. Despite the characters using a different style of execution, I wouldn't necessarily call them simple either. Kitschiki's style features thin and very clean line work, which allows for more details and reduces the line weight. Another thing of note is Kitschiki's use of soft cell shading. Unlike Blitzy's work that uses hard cell shading, soft cell shading can be achieved the same way, but usually by using very precise airbrushing or sometimes using a blur tool to make the shadows look softer. I've also noticed that Kitschiki will often have some level of layering when it comes to shadows, which basically means that she included a mid-tone shadow that has a reduced opacity to provide some basic dimension to the character. Then she goes back and adds more precise darker shadows and highlights to the character to really lock in those shapes. I think what I like most about Kitschiki's characters is just how shapely they are. While shapeliness can really only be achieved by practice, the level of consistency and depth with her characters looks very nice and professional. Alright, we've talked about animals for a while, let's get back to people. Next up, we have Demai Mikaz. What's the hardest thing to draw for a lot of artists out there? I will bet you that it is humans. Demai Mikaz's style with how she draws humans is probably one of my favorite styles I've seen in a while. Stylistically speaking, humans probably have the widest range of options since they have a lot of intricacies with anatomy and not even mentioning all the nuances with the face and hands. If you remember back a little while, I talked about appeal, and Demai Mikaz's style is the perfect hybridization of stylistic appeal and realism. You can see the appeal in the more stylized eyes and slightly simplified face. But the anatomy of the body is overall a lot more realistically proportioned compared to Keyframe's work. I also really like the way she does her shading and highlights. From what I can tell, Demai Mikaz will take another layer in her painting program, paint the shadows on by hand, and then reduce the opacity so it works. Some of the shadows do look manually painted, but in instances of this highlight, the details are a little too consistent. Lastly, I want to talk about color coding. Demai Mikaz's pieces have a very good sense of color coding and composition, drawing the eye to the more important details with colors that stand out, and keeping the focus on the piece more detailed than the background. You can tell the character with the golden sweater is the one we're supposed to focus on, since this character is the most detailed compared to the characters in the background. Despite this, all of the characters seem to be from the same world. Just a side note, I'm also a big fan of Demai's sci-fi style. Little details such as a hollow screen and the floating cameras are something that I'm a sucker for, though that's probably just me. Lastly, but certainly not leastly, we have Lao Vaughn. Hey look, it's a traditional artist for once! All joking aside though, I feel like Lao Vaughn's work is probably the best example for what to go to when it comes to watercolor and traditional mediums in general. The first thing I need to point out is the vibrance of the colors. Too often I'll see watercolor pieces that are very pale pastel colors, and while that can look nice in some circumstances, other times it can make the pictures look kind of lifeless. When it comes to the art world, watercolor can be a tricky medium to work with because it requires a lot of planning and know-how when it comes to lighting and color placement. Lavon not only manages to include vibrant shades into his piece, but the shading is very smooth and crisp. With the amount of detail in Lavon's pieces, I can only guess that his pieces take a very long time to make, especially in instances of this piece with all the dots and the scales and the freckles. I think another thing I like about Lavon's work is the way that he draws his humans. Realistic humans are difficult to get right, and even though there are small aspects such as the colors that might differ from real life, the way that Lao Vaughn draws his people is really pretty and very nice to look at. I'm also very surprised at how small some of his pictures are, considering the amount of detail in them. Anyone who's able to work on such a small surface has my respect. I also found out that while scrolling through his gallery that he has a YouTube channel where he has tutorials. Hmm. Might take a look at some of these. Might learn some good techniques. So, what have we learned today? Well, we've looked at 10 artists who all have different styles, different techniques, and different things about their artwork that makes it unique. 
That's the important thing to know about art styles. They're not like fingerprints. They don't just stay the same throughout our lives. However, they are unique to a person. Sure, a style might be similar to another person's art style, but what's important is what they put behind it. A style isn't always a sign of improvement, but rather a sign of growth and persistence. Art styles don't change for absolutely no reason. They change because someone will see what others have made and want to try and make something like that. Sure, there's techniques and industry standards that you can try to meet, but what's important to remember is to keep moving forward. To keep looking forward to new opportunities and find stuff that inspires you. And that's about it for today's episode. If you guys liked what you saw and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe and share this video around. It supports me and is practically free. Also be sure to follow me on Twitter and DeviantArt where I post art and updates on the show. Big thanks to the artists who allow me to use their artwork in this video, the links to their work is in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching, I'm Spirit, and I'll see you next time.